What's up guys, it's Airstuff FPV here showing you how I converted a conventional tail into a V-tail on one of my FPV planes for better performance. This particular model is the Silver Guardian, a custom built FPV plane with a wingspan of 1.6 meters and a 4S 5000 mAh LiPo battery for flight times up to 65 minutes. With its tractor propeller and carbon tail boom, it cruises at an average of 120 mAh per kilometer, which is quite efficient for its configuration and all up weight of roughly 1.65 kg. It has a Matek F411 WTE flight controller with waypoint mission capabilities, and for that purpose, I installed and configured powerful LED lights as navigation lights, which illuminate very well in the evening skies. But with these additional navigation lights, the aircraft flies with increased form drag, which is a type of parasitic drag of an aircraft. But not only that, the two LED lights and an additional LED controller inside the aircraft not only add more weight but also consume up the aircraft's total flight time. And this led me to think that a V-tail is the perfect solution for these drawbacks. A V-tail is not only lighter but it also decreases the aircraft's profile drag because it just has two surfaces instead of three. So I went ahead and took the conventional tail off as well as the FPV camera and the white LED at the back of the aircraft and got to work. And these are my dimensions for this particular build, a 1.6 meter wingspan structure. And I got to these dimensions because in one of my early videos I showed a V-tail to wingspan ratio list. And this is to see what the minimum V-tail span would be, not the cord but the span. And this is important because a too small V-tail span can cause drastic instability in flight. If you want a complete guide to build a V-tail like this or the standard one, click on the top right to check it out. After its shape was cut out and taped with these colors, I finished them up by rounding off the leading edges and beveling the trailing edges. Then I took this approach of using two plastic cards bent to 90 degrees and taped them in lengthwise order and used this 5mm carbon fiber rod as an additional support to keep this structure rigid and glued the stabilizers in place. And this stabilizer structure turned out to be very strong and solid, so I went ahead and removed the tape and paper from the middle of the V-tail structure to glue the V-tail on the carbon tail boom from the bottom up. And this required me to eyeball the structure to point perfectly straight and level, and it turned out to be so. At last, I took a third plastic card and formed its shape so it'll be glued from the top on the boom and the V-tail for additional stiffness and structural integrity. At first glance, it looked quite amazing and the only thing I had to do to make it fly in general was to configure the flight controller to operate a V-tail. So I did so by going to the mixer page in INAV and configuring the V-tail platform. And finally, I reglued the FPV camera underneath the V-tail as well as the landing skid made of a double folded plastic card and the tail light which was glued inside the end of the boom. And all of this turned out to be very great, so I charged up two of my LiPo batteries and went out on the field to test it out. All right, my DVR is going on the uh, tripod. I got my screen here, a 5.8 gigahertz uh, single antenna receiver and the aircraft, of course. The controls look good. Just one more time checking the uh, reflex, just in case. Left, right, up, down. The motor works. That should be good to go. Stabilize mode. And off it goes. And that one soars very nicely. My goodness, I'm a bit high up, but I will go down in a sec. Look at that. From a conventional tail to a V-tail, but what a sight it is. There's just something about V-tails that makes it so unique. I do notice in this particular plane that the uh, roll control is very sensitive. I see uh, the overshooting of the flight controller in stabilization modes. So I might have to tune down the 
huge throws a bit, but that one soars awesome. It's quite breezy today as well. Whoa. When it banks a bit away from the wind, the whole wing will be swept away with it. Nice. In a sec, I'm gonna climb up to, I think, approximately 80, 90 meters and try if RTH loiter works. So its flight characteristics are as good if not better compared to its previous tail configuration. But as far as efficiency numbers, I don't have the right season yet. Here's a screenshot of the FPV feed on a windless summer evening while the plane did an autonomous loiter. If you look at the bottom right, it shows the consumed capacity of 3165 mAh and trip distance of 25.8 km. If you want to know the efficiency, this is then easily calculated by dividing the mAh by its trip distance and you get 123 mAh per kilometer. And at the flying field, I did the same loiter, but unfortunately had much windier conditions and excessive throttle settings as well as aborted landing attempts which influence its average efficiency. However, unlike the circumstances, it did 128 mAh per kilometer, which isn't bad after all. But to really find out its increased efficiency in mAh per kilometer, because I know it's more efficient, I need another windless day and lower throttle input, and that will be covered in a separate upcoming video. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something new or gained inspiration to build, fly, and improve your own FPV builds. And I'll see you guys in the next video.